What's up guys? I hope everybody's well. I hope everybody's enjoying this really cool weather we've got. Um, today is Tuesday and you know what Tuesday is. It is Bible study night. It has been for the last umpteen amount of years. Um, so I am super excited that you're here. If you're looking, looking for the teaching portion of the Bible study, skip to about the five minute mark or so, and then we're going to dive in. I am super excited that everybody is here. Um, you are uh, not seeing this Bible study by uh, random assignment. It is 100% God-led if you are sitting here and watching this Bible study with us, especially if it's your first time. We usually have about, I don't know, I don't know 20 or 30 people that hop on. So it uh, looks like we've got five or 10 already. Uh, we're going to be stopping. Uh, um, we're going to be starting here in about probably about 10 minutes. Uh, today, we're going to go part two of our series of salvation. Uh, last week, we talked about repentance. Uh, we're going to touch on that uh, today as well. But then today, we're really going to go into um, baptism. Um, is it necessary to uh, be baptized uh, as far as salvation is concerned? And we're going to go into absolutely every bit of that. So like I said, guys, uh, we do this every single Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to wait. Um, oh, sorry to shut the door. <laughs> We're going to wait uh, uh, here about just two or three minutes. Like I said, we usually have 20 or 30 that hop on. Um, but uh, yeah, super excited to be here. I'm actually teaching out of my church again, um, or our church again. I'm actually in our youth room. Actually, a pretty cool room, believe it or not. Yeah, pretty neat. Pretty neat. So anyways, yeah, y'all give uh, everybody else uh, just a few minutes to hop on. Like I said, I'm starting a little bit behind tonight. Um, but you know what? We're going to dive right into it here in just a couple of minutes. Um, comment below if you guys are really enjoying this weather, man. I don't know about you guys, but fall is one of my favorite seasons in the world. I love fall. I like looking at the leaves. I like seeing all the different colors. Um, you know, I like sitting on the back porch or just sitting in my hammock. So I've got this hammock thing that's pretty cool. It, it rolls up into a ball about that big, and you can take it anywhere you go. You can just wrap it in between two trees, and, and you can just have a hammock wherever you want to. It's made out of like that parachute material, so it's called an Eno. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but if you haven't and you want something just to carry with you that's super peaceful, you can hop in anytime you want to, go check it out. Um, anyways, uh, we're going to get started here in uh, maybe about just a couple of minutes. Um, oh, man. Got to love water. <laughs> I don't know if you guys were here a couple of, uh, a couple of Bible studies ago, but um, a couple of Bible studies ago, I accidentally almost drank out of the Purex bottle because I had it right next to my water bottle and I wasn't paying attention. Uh, that was a fun one. <laughs> Anyways, um, so <clears throat> let's go into tonight's topic. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about baptism. Um, we're going to be talking about how to baptize. Um, uh, is there a correct way to be baptized? Uh, is it even necessary for salvation? Uh, we're going to be covering each and every one of those topics. Now, um, I'm going to trim this message up, God willing, I'm going to trim this message up to about a 30 to 40 minute message rather than the normal hour that we usually do. Um, and uh, the Lord wants me in, um, in anyways, and the Lord wants me in prayer after this, and I, like, I just feel it coming. So uh, we're just going to dive right into this. Guys, if you have any prayer requests whatsoever, you know, just drop them in the comments. Um, you know, there are a lot of people on here that I pray for you. Um, and, and, and just keep in mind that our first line of defense is not asking somebody else for prayer. That's completely incorrect. Our first line of defense is to reach up and ask God uh, and pray to God and ask him what he wants to us to do about a situation. So um, don't forget that when you're asking questions or whenever you're asking for prayer, just make sure you've prayed yourself because ultimately he's going to answer. Um, he wants to answer you directly because it's just really cool that way. Anyways. And there's, some, there's a lot of scripture behind that. But anyway, so let's go into prayer. Um, like I said, uh, towards the end of last week's group, um, we're, we're a group that actually causes for change. Like we're doing Bible studies because we want to see change, right? That's the only reason why you're here. That's the only reason why I'm here um, is because we want to change our lives and, and not only grow our walk, but actually see it grow and get closer to God. That's the whole point in us doing a Bible study. It's more than just, oh, let's just take a look at the Word. It's about equipping the saints, equipping you guys with the right knowledge, equipping me with the right knowledge. That way that we can also go spread out the correct knowledge. Because there are a lot of misconceptions and a lot of partial truths out there. And that's what we're trying to eliminate here. So if you guys wouldn't mind with me, let's go ahead and pray. And then we're going to hop right into Bible study. Um, 
God, I thank you. I thank you so much for everything you've given us. God, we rebuke and bind. Jesus, we rebuke and bind any spirits coming against us right now, God. We rebuke and bind the spirit of depression, God. We rebuke and bind distractions, God. Lord, where there is a screaming child over in the corner that's causing a mother to be like, I don't know if I want to listen to Bible study. God, shut, uh, just, just, just shut the mouth of that, that beautiful, young, little, tiny, little munchkin for just a little bit so we can focus on Bible study. Lord, I pray that you would guide us. I rebuke about any distraction, no matter what it is, family issues, friend issues, boss issues, job issues, financial issues. Lord, I pray that we would remove that from our minds just so we could focus on you in this just short amount of time. Because God, we know we give Facebook hours a day. We give our job hours a day. We give our family hours a day. And the reality of it is, is we should be giving you a lot of time, but lots of times we get busy and we don't. Is that an excuse? No, but the reality of it is, is these are what these Bible studies are for, is for, for us drawing closer to you and getting closer to you. That's what we are here for. And God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for the power that comes through revelation. Lord, I rebuke and bind tradition in the name of Jesus. That's one thing that we've been harboring here. We've been na- knocking down just walls of tradition. Um, and Lord, I, I loose your spirit of revelation to come upon us. God, I pray that if we're in a posture of receiving new revelation, that you would give it to us, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. By the way, just as an FYI, new revelation does and does uh, nobody any good if we're not in a posture to receive new revelation. Now, what I mean by that is, is that is that if we are in tradition and not open to new revelation, the new revelation will not come. We will not grow on our walk. We will not see miracles happen. We will not see growth because we have stopped ourselves at where tradition stops us. So this is what we're doing in this Bible study is we are moving past tradition into truth. Because the reality of it is, is guys, I, I, oh, Jesus. Some of us were raised Baptist. Some of us were raised Methodist, Church of Christ, Apostolic, you know, Pentecostal, uh, uh, Catholic, whatever. And this is not what this is about. This is not going into a certain denomination. This is about living the apostolic lifestyle like Jesus called us to be, reaching everybody else. That's what we're doing. That's what this whole Bible study is for. Not just to go home, meditate on it, and just sit on it. It's for us to go reach as many people as we can because there's a lost and hurting world out there that needs to be reached, and we need to be a part of that. That is our mission. It should be a part of our mission. Um, and if you're not really like, you're like, oh, you know what? I don't really feel that or oh, whatever. Faith is not about feeling. And the closer you get to God, the closer you'll feel God's heart. The clo- oh, just like, just like John, right? It, 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 at the Last Supper, John, he leaned on Jesus's bosom. He could hear his heartbeat. John was the closest to Jesus because he wanted to get the closest to Jesus. Now that there's some revelation in that too. The closer you want, mm, there's got to be a want to get closer to Jesus in order to get closer to Jesus. All right, so base scripture that we uh, talked about last week, uh, we're going to recap repentance just in a very short way, um, and then we're going to go into baptism, and is it necessary? So our core scripture we've been focusing on is is, is uh, Acts 2 and 38. It says that Peter said to them, repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, not his titles, uh, for the remission of sins, and you shall re- receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost, same exact thing. Um, but let's let's go into that repentance and just kind of recoup that again. So the first thing it says is repent. Okay. Now uh, we've talked about this before. Repentance is an actual action. It's a turning away from sin. It's not just asking for forgiveness. Asking for forgiveness is just the words that come out of our mouth. The the action that is behind those words is the actual repentance. Okay. Um, and now let me tell you something. God is all about process and he's all about patterns, okay, and the fulfillment of those patterns. Um, he actually modeled our salvation. Now, if you get this, it's going to be really, really cool, especially if you like digging into words and digging into what Jesus teaches. You're going to love this. Um, so let's go into this real quick. Uh, um, God actually modeled our, our salvation before it was even explained to us. Uh, in a nutshell, there were three steps, okay, and, and here's, here's what I'm going to explain to you guys. And, and I understand where some of you guys are coming from. And a, a lot of folks can, I've heard a lot of folks, they'll address the, uh, oh, well, Romans says this. All you have to do is believe and be saved, confess with your mouth. Listen, I get all that, okay? I understand that. The Bible agrees with each other. Scriptures don't disagree with each other, okay? The Bible the Bible uh, simultaneously agrees with itself, okay? So, so we have to understand is what we're pulling from here are Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, the life of Jesus. Then Acts is obviously the birth of the new church, the, the acting out 
of what the church is supposed to be like. And 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 books like um, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Romans, all those were epistles. Epistles were letters written to churches who already were founded, already spirit-filled, and already had the knowledge of, of what I'm about to teach right now. There were already existing churches. And what we can't do is we can't base our doctrine off of a letter that was meant to correct a church. My point is, is this is going to sound so dumb, but I want you guys to bear with me here because a lot of I know a lot of people are like, oh, Romans says this. You're right. Romans does say a lot of things. So does John. So does Matthew. So does Mark. So does Luke. These things have to agree with each other. These things don't disagree with each other. Like, for example, um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Paul was addressing the, the Corinthian church, and he was talking about spiritual gifts because a lot of them had a lack of understanding and they had a lot of issues with it. And he was specifically addressing that church, correcting them in spiritual gifts, right? Um, but he knows Notice he didn't correct. Did he? he didn't deal with that in the Roman church. He didn't deal with that in you know in uh, any of the other churches. It was this for that pers- that particular church. It was that particular issue for that particular church. Romans was dealing. Oh Jesus, Romans was dealing with their own issues. Each church was dealing with their own issues. Right? Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Um, all right. So step one. Okay. So Jesus didn't have to repent, okay? Jesus did not have to repent. Um, Jesus was not born into sin. Uh, he was born without spot or blemish. And he was uh, actually in Matthew, where the first scripture we're going to go in tonight, or second scripture technically, is going to be Matthew 1, verse 20. Matthew 1, verse 20. Oh, and just as an FYI, I'm getting a lot of requests for um, uh, for Spanish subtitles. Uh, I am working on that. God willing, by next Bible study, we will have full-on Spanish p- subtitles because I know we have a lot of Spanish folks that are watching Bible studies who'd like to be able to read with it. So that is actually in the works. I have heard your messages, and I am I am researching it now. So it is getting done, God willing. Um, so what I want to point out is that uh, uh, we're going to hop into Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. It says, by, uh, by why he thought these things, and behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, and saying, Joseph, the son of David, do not be afraid. Take Mary, your wife, for that which she has conceived is of her of the Holy Spirit. Okay, So Jesus, if we believe that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are three separate entities, that we can't say that Jesus is the Son of God because the Bible says that he was conceived of the Holy Spirit, which means in a nutshell we would have to say that Jesus is a son of the Holy Spirit, which you're like, oh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, neither does neither does multiple gods. And we're going to go into that. And, and, and you're going to have to stick with me throughout this entire Bible study to, in order to get this. And also you're going to have to come back next week in order to tie everything together because this is a three-part series, right? Um, you, everything's going to connect. That's what we're doing. We're connecting dots because most people will stop at belief and they'll never make it because it's more than just belief. Um so he didn't have to repent at all. Um, the second uh, scripture I want to go into was John chapter 3, verse 13. Flip to John chapter 3, 13. I hope you have your Bibles out, and I hope you have your, uh, uh, your notebooks, and you're taking notes, and yada, yada, yada. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're going to John chapter 3. All right, John chapter 3. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, We'll start at 13. We'll start at 13. John chapter 3, starting at 13. Um, it says, No one, it says, uh, excuse me, no one has ascended to heaven, but he, uh, I'm trying to read all the way over here, and the lighting is pretty rough. All right. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man, who is in heaven. I want to point this out real quick. Oh, Jesus. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. Okay, this is Jesus talking on earth, right? And then he says, the Son of Man who is in heaven. So how is the Son of Man in heaven right now at the same time as being on earth? I want you to think about that real quick, because everything I'm going to talk about tonight is going to show the oneness of God, and it's also going to show baptism as a necessity. And it says, and Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, and even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to point something out because it is a lot more than belief. 
Um, in that same, uh, and I'm going to go, I'm, I may be getting ahead of myself just a little bit, but in that same chapter, right, we need to understand that there's a difference between the word should and there's a difference between the word shall. I hear a lot of people quote John 3.16, but they, 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 they quote it incorrectly. And it really depends on what version you're reading, which is kind of a scary thought, because if you actually read the Greek and read the Hebrew, lots of times those words can be completely different than what we have today. So my point is, is that a New King James Version or a King James Version, and, and I'm sure that several others, they don't read it as, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. They read it as, should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, there's a difference between shall and should. I know I'm speaking fast, but you need to get it. There's a difference between shall and should. I'm just going to, all of us were kids one day, right? I used to tell my mom, hey, mom, I should be home by like 10 o'clock. I should be home by like 10 o'clock. I mean, what's that mean? Let's, let's be real. It was probably like 11 o'clock, maybe 11. I dated this girl a long time ago, and I swore I was supposed to be home at 10 o'clock so many times. I told my mom I, I was going to be home at 10 o'clock. I never did. But, see, the word shall is a definitive thing in the Bible. It means it will happen without a shadow of a doubt. See, most people quote the scripture as shall be saved, and that is incorrect. It says should be saved. Take a look at it. Take a look at it. New King James, King James, take a look at it. It says should be saved, which means there is an option that you may not be saved. Whereas shall means that it will happen. That's where, and I know a lot of people say, oh, don't, it doesn't matter about the version of your Bible. Oh, really? Absolutely it does. It does without a shadow of a dead gum doubt. All right? All right. So, um, I know that was a lot. But my point was, is that, um, yeah. Yeah, anyways. So, uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew, let's see, okay, all right, here we go, Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, um, this is the step 2 and the step 3 of the salvation process that we talked about. Remember, our core scripture is, uh, Acts 2.38, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Not should, it says shall. Let's go. Okay, so step one, obviously Jesus, he did not have to, uh, he did not have to um, uh, uh, repent because he was born, uh, he wasn't born in sin. Uh, then uh, we're going to read Matthew chapter 3, verse three, uh, 13 through 16. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. Jesus had to be baptized himself. Jesus is a model for how we should be. Jesus had to be baptized by himself. He said, John tried to prevent him from saying, I need to be baptized, and yet you are coming to me? And Jesus said to him, Permit me to do so, for thus it is fitting to us to fulfill all righteousness. What he's talking about is prophecy here. What's happening now is a fulfillment of prophecy. You can find lots of this prophecy in the book of Isaiah or Joel. Uh, or talking about Joel. Uh, then, then he allowed him. It says, Then when he was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending on like a dove upon him. Okay, all right, so what do you have now? We've already gone through three processes here. We have, we have repentance, which once again, Jesus didn't have to do. But what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you that the very first message that Jesus taught was about repentance, right? The very first message that Jesus taught was about repentance. So right now, we 100% for sure have baptism and filled with the Spirit. Jesus was baptized, and he was filled with the Spirit. Um, so let, let, let's kind of let's let's dig into this. I think you guys are going to like this. Um, let's go to um, uh, let's go to do, 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 Matthew chapter seventeen. I hope you guys are taking notes. I hope you guys are taking notes. Matthew chapter seventeen. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Did Gumna did it again? I wrote the chapter down without the verse. I'm gonna have to find it. Do, do, do. Matthew 17. Oh, wait a second. Maybe it was Matthew 3. Maybe I backed up there. Matthew 3, verse 17. Nope. And I'm going to do it again. All right. I will tag this scripture. I will tag this scripture below. Let me see if I've got it right here. 
All right. Well, you know what? I will tag I will tag the scripture below whenever I finish up. Um, oh, never mind. Here's right here. Matthew chapter four, verse seventeen through twenty. Um, this is the I want I want to point this out. I want to point this out. Okay, the very first message that Jesus ended up preaching um, after his uh, after his baptism and being filled with the Spirit was repentance. Okay, was repentance. It's Matthew chapter four, verse seventeen through twenty. It says, um, "From that time, Jesus began to preach." Oh, man, I need to hurry up. Jesus began to preach and say, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." This is whenever he was calling the disciples. He was calling his initial disciples. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers called Simon and Peter. Uh, called si- excuse me, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting his net into the sea. Yada yada yada. So. First message that Jesus ended up teaching on was repentance as soon as he was baptized, as soon as he was filled with the Spirit. I want you guys to just keep in the flow here. Mark 1 and 14, Jesus speaks again, calling us to repentance. Repentance is the turning away from sin. Now, when John was put into prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel for the kingdom of, uh, uh, of the kingdom of God, saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And we say that repentance is not necessary for salvation? Uh Uh-uh. No, sir, no, ma'am. It is way more than believing. Repentance is turning away from the old life, turning away from sin. Jesus consistently asks and says we need to repent, right? Commands. He commands repentance. 2 Chronicles 7.14. This is uh, 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 going into something a little bit different. If my people who are called by name by my name will humble themselves... Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. This is Old Testament. What is Jesus doing? Jesus is calling for repentance. Jesus, all Jesus has wanted, wanted it. Wow, I just said wanted it. Everybody who just heard that, just type in wanted it. We're just going to, we're just going to, that's going to be trending. Wanted it. Uh, (laughs) All Jesus has ever wanted for his people is for them to repent, turn away from their wicked ways, and to come towards him. That's all he's ever wanted. Revelation, going into the very last book of the Bible. 3, verse 15 through 16 and 19. God calls the lukewarm church to repentance. Uh, Verse 15. I know that your works, they are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were hot or cold. You know why he says you wish you were hot or cold? That's because whenever you're in the middle of, and I can speak, because guys, I've been lukewarm before. I can tell you what happens when you're lukewarm. You get confused on what the voice of God is and what the voice of Satan is. And all of a sudden, because you're lukewarm, you're following one or the other. And you may be following God sometimes and, and, and Satan on the other, but you don't know which one it is because you don't know the voice of God anymore because you're lukewarm. And it's miserable and it sucks and it's confusing. I have been there That's why I'm saying that, because it causes confusion, and God is not the author of confusion. It says, so then, because you were lukewarm, because you were unrepented, there's no such thing as a lukewarm Christian, okay? There is a a repented Christian who has turned away from their old life, who is living for God, and then and then it's just the reality of it. And, and I'm not trying to be brash. I'm not trying to be upset because if you're seeking God right now and you've got some hang-ups and you've got some issues, bro, God can help you with it. God can help you with it, man. God can help you overcome. God can help you overcome any addiction, any problem, any family issue, whatever it is in your life. God can help you overcome it. Doesn't matter what it is. But in order to receive new revelation, once again, we have to be in a posture to receive new revelation, which means that we have to accept this is this is the word of God and not the word of Jeremiah. Don't get frustrated at me. All right, it says, I know you were lukewarm and neither hot nor cold. Like I said, guys, please don't get there. I'm begging you, please don't get there where you're lukewarm and you know the voice of God, especially if you're spirit-filled. If you are spirit-filled and you get lukewarm, oh my goodness, it gets a mess. He says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. I love that. As many as I rebuke, as many as I love, I rebuke and, ch- and chasten. There, <laughs> therefore, be zealous and repent. Okay, so, <laughs> okay. So from Genesis down to Revelation, Jesus has always called for repentance. Now that we've recapped. Step two, let's talk about baptism. Let's talk about baptism. Like I said, as you can see, God has always called us to repent and turn away from sin. That is step one. My goodness. All right, let's see where we are at time-wise. I'm not even going to worry about it. All right, here we go. John. Um, 
chapter three, verse one through eight. This is a story that I absolutely love. This is a conversation in between Nicodemus, who is a ruler of the uh, ruler of the Jews, and Jesus Himself. I'm going to read it to you, and I want you to follow along with me. John three, chapter one through eight. This is going to be a big kicker. You need to pay attention. There was a man of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, you know why I came to him by night? Because he was afraid of his reputation being ruined because all of his friends didn't believe that Jesus was Messiah and all of his friends didn't believe, you know, he, he wanted to protect his reputation. But nevertheless, he still came to Jesus. Nevertheless, he still came to Jesus. He says, Rabbi, which means teacher. He didn't acknowledge him as Messiah. He acknowledges him as teacher. He says, we know that you're a teacher come from God for no one can do these signs unless uh, God is with them. And Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay. All right. This is where I want to absolutely obliterate the Romans just believe. All you have to do is confess with your mouth thing right here. Because if we believe that the Bible agrees with each other in its entirety, then we can't take a book out of the Bible and say this one applies and this one does not apply. Are you hearing me? We need to understand the context of what we're reading before we, we, before we uh, accept it as truth. Romans was an epistle, once again, written to a church that already existed. They were already spirit-filled. They were already an established church. It was a correction letter, just like all of the epistles. We're talking doctrine now. We cannot pull doctrine from epistles that were written as correction letters to individual churches. Otherwise, you'd have to pull doctrine from each and every one of them in, anyways. Ugh. You have, to see, you have to read the Bible for the whole truth. Whole truth. Um, anyways, okay. So, and he says, most assuredly, he says, he says uh, Jesus himself is saying this. He says, you, unless one is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom. So, so I want you guys to agree. Unless we are born again, we cannot see the kingdom of God because that was what Jesus just said. Okay, you agreed? Great. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into a mother's womb and be born? I don't think he was being arrogant here. I just think he literally was, I think he's an extremely smart guy. He was very high up in the Sanhedrin. If you know anybody, if you know people that have really, really high IQs, lots of times their common sense can be kind of low um, because they're extremely smart. And I think that's the situation in the, in the context of what Nicodemus is asking here. And Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, he literally repeats it. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Okay, I want to take a step back just for a second. Once again, huh, Romans talks about belief. If you don't believe in God, you're not going to do the things of God. Right? Do you understand what that means? That means if you don't just believe in God, you're not ever going to pick this thing up and read it. There's, we're, we're, we're diving into the Word, pulling out the fullness of God, not just diving into it, pulling out the easy part. And it's more than that because I'm not criticizing anybody's knowledge because what we're doing right now is we're not actually we're not criticizing. Now we're trying to build upon the knowledge of God. That's the only reason why we're doing this Bible study. We're trying to build upon the knowledge of God, increase our knowledge of God. Okay, so it's more than just belief. Jesus himself says you must be born of the water. You must be born of the spirit. Um, he says, and, and then he says, he says, that which is born is flesh. Uh, that, which, uh, uh, that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born is spirit is spirit. And then he says, do not marvel that I say this unto you. You must be born again. And what I'm telling you guys is don't be surprised. You must be born again. Jesus literally said, you must be born of the water, you must be born of the Spirit, otherwise you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. Like, we are in the scripture, we are reading it. If you have your word, you're reading it with me. We're in John chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. And it says, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where, or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, we're going to get into the Spirit next week. Right now, we're going to deal with baptism. So, is water baptism necessary? Absolutely. It is not just some public profession of faith. Nowhere. Oh, you get my point? Jesus said it's a must. And if Jesus said that you must be born of the water, you must be born of the Spirit, and also taught repentance throughout the entire Bible, we have to repent. We have to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus. And also, we have to receive the Spirit of God. I'm reading it right from the Word. All right, so let's go. Um, so how are we supposed to be baptized? Now, 
If you actually read the word baptize, okay, the uh, word for that is baptismo, which means immersion, full immersion. Not the sprinkling of blood or the sprinkling of water on somebody's face or grabbing a squirt gun and shooting them in the face because of COVID and, oh, your sins are forgiven. Pew! No, no, absolutely not. The, the word at its core means full submersion. Baptize, full submersion, which as an FYI, I want you guys to get this because some of you seasoned uh, believers and some of you seasoned spirit-filled people have to understand it. He also says baptized in the water and of the spirit. Yes, you have to be baptized full immersion in water in the name of Jesus, but you also have to be baptized full immersion in the spirit. You got to walk daily. Otherwise, you're not fully submersed in the will of God. Ooh, get that. Get that. Understand that. You're not okay. Oh, Jesus. We're not okay if we're just like, oh, you know, I'm spirit-filled. I've spoken in another language. I, I'm, You know, I've been baptized in Jesus' name, but, you know, I'm doing my own thing. No, 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 no. We have to be fully submersed in the Word of God. Baptized. Baptismo. Immersed. Fully submersed in the Spirit. Guided by God. Guided by, oh, Jesus. Anyways, all right, so <laughs> I hope you guys are really loving this. I'm enjoying this. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. How are we supposed to be baptized? This is what we're going to go into. Um, and Jesus came and spoke unto him, saying, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you to do. Lo, I am with you always. All right, stop right here. All 20 or 30 of you that are sitting right here need to understand this next five minutes. Otherwise, this Bible study will be like a null and void. Like you just will not continue. Like I said, you need to follow the series from, from part one, part two, part three. We just lost one. He completely missed the point. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just laughed. All right, so... Here we go. Um, I want to point out here that Jesus is very specific in what he says, okay? So he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay, there's a difference in between singular words and plural words. Jesus does not say names. He does not say, hey, baptize them in the names of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. No, he says the name, singular, not plural. I want to point this out. Jews are monotheistic, okay? If you don't know what monotheistic means, it means they believe in one God. They, I figured we'd lose some people. <laughs> they believe in one God, okay? They, they believe that God was going to manifest himself in flesh, come down and rule the rod of iron. Now, they had one thing right. There's just one God. There's not three. There's not five. Jesus is the everlasting father, just like he is... Jesus is the everlasting Father, just like He is anything else. He's the Prince of Peace. He's our Provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Nisi. Right? He's 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 uh, He's all these plenty of times. I'll give you an example. My name's Jeremiah. Right? I'm an uncle to a, I'm an uncle. I'm um, a son. Uh, I'm a brother. Right? I got plenty of titles, but I only got one name. Mm, the power's in the name. We're about to dig into this. Okay. So he says the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Singular, not plural. He does not specify all three as being entities of separate nature. He says the name. Here's what we're going into. Jesus is about to reveal himself, reveal himself as the Father. Besides the fact that I'm sure all of you know the, the, the scripture, I think it's in Isaiah, where it says he's going to be called the Wonderful Counselor, um, the Mighty God, uh, the Everlasting Father, right? Okay. I want, you, I, want you, I want you to get this. We're going to go to John chapter 1. Follow with me here. Follow with me here. John chapter 1. We've got a lot of scripture, and the reason why we got a lot of scripture is because we're proving a lot of things tonight. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, all right, let's stop right here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, so in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God. The Word was God, okay? All right. I want you to drop down to verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we built his glory as of the only begotten Father, full of grace and truth. Okay. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. 
Okay, the word was God. And then the word became flesh. That means God manifested himself in flesh. If the word was God and the word became flesh, well, who became flesh? Jesus. Who was God? Jesus. We just proved that. Literally just prove that. And I'm going to continue to give you scriptures to back up that. Um, John chapter 14, verse 5 through 11. Jesus is having a conversation with Thomas here. And he says, and, he says, and once again, I want, you, I want to point this out, that the Jews are monotheistic. They believe in one God. They do not believe in multiples. Uh, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way. I love the scripture, guys. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you, uh, I want you guys to get this. If you had known me, you would have known my Father, and from now on you know him and have seen him. Hmm. In the beginning was the Word. The Word became flesh. God manifested himself and became flesh. Now Jesus is saying, hey, you've seen the Father. Hmm. It's because the Father and Jesus are the exact same thing. Let's keep on going. Um, and, 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 and then Philip says to him, Lord, show us the Father. And is it sufficient for us? And Jesus said to him, I want you guys to get this. Have I been with you so long that you have not known me, Philip? Philip just asked Jesus to show him the Father. And Jesus just replied, Have I been with you so long that you have not known me, Philip? Oh, Jesus. He says, He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? He's saying, What you're saying makes no sense. Because we're the exact same. Do you not believe? Oh, Jesus, do you not believe that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak by my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. And believe me, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the word itself. Let's keep on going. I hope you guys are getting a lot of revelation. If you're getting revelation in this Bible study, I want you to put in the comments revelation. I hope you guys are really, really grasping it. I really hope you do. Um, and by the way, sometimes you can only teach so much, and the Spirit of the Lord has to not only open us up to revelation, but also teach us revelation as well. I can tell you that I had lots of people tell me things about the Word that I was revealed to by God before I, well, anyways. Let's keep on going, because it's not about what, oh, Jesus. It's not about how you were raised, not about what your mama said, not about what your daddy said, not about what your pastor said, not about what, any of that, okay? Don't get me wrong. We definitely need to be able to seek wise counsel. I've said that a million times, but we should be able to seek God before anything else. And if we're basing our faith based off of what somebody else just teaches, what somebody else just teaches us, and we're not backing it up, then, then we're putting our salvation into somebody else's hands. If we don't make it, that's not, that's not that other person's fault. That's ours. That's why I'm so devoted on going scripture by scripture with you guys, making sure that you understand and you're reading the exact same thing I'm not, I, I, I'm doing, right? Matthew 16. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go back real quick to Acts 2 and 38, okay, just for a second. It says, And Peter said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, all right. So, uh -huh. Peter has the understanding that God, Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. I'm about to read it to you, okay? Um, and also, Jesus also tried to explain this exact same topic to Thomas. Um, Matthew 16, verse 16 through 20. Peter has the understanding that Jesus is the Christ, God manifest in flesh. Once again, Jews are monotheistic. They believe in one God, right? One God, okay? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I want to... Mm, if there were three separate entities, then why in the world don't Jews believe in three separate entities? If, if the Jews are God's chosen people, don't you think that they would have a foundation that was solid? I mean, obviously they messed up whenever Jesus came. But prior to that, there were no corrective... Oh, Jesus... Oh, my gosh. All right. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Jews are monotheistic. Um, Matthew chapter 16. Uh, we're actually going to start at 13. I think I actually cut some stuff out of this one. Um, Matthew 16. Oh, we're going to come on the same page. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. 16 verse... Yeah, 
There we go. Uh, no, dead gummit. What did I do here? 16, 16. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, yeah, all right, we're good. Yeah, Matt, sorry, we're starting at chapter, uh, uh, chapter 16, verse 13. Um, when Jesus came to the region, 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 the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am? This, uh, uh, excuse me. Whom do you, excuse me. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Mm. Jesus. You know why they were saying this? Because that they believed that there was one God. They believed that there was one God. And that one God was standing right in front of them, ruling in a different posture than what they were taught their entire lives. That's why they're out here throwing these things out, thinking maybe he's just a prophet. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's just a... Another, you know, maybe he's just a mighty man used to God. Like Nicodemus said, he said, Rabbi, teacher, we know that you're from God. But the Jews were expecting one God manifest, oh, manifested in his flesh, but they completely missed it. <laughs> and it says, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others, uh, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter, Peter had the understanding. Peter finally got it. Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is also in heaven. What I want to point out here is how many times, how many times was Jesus already referred to in the past as the Son of God? Quite a bit. But Jesus understood that he was the Christ. I mean, excuse me, Peter understood that he was the Christ. One true living God manifested in flesh. And the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Verse 14, John chapter 3. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Peter knew it. Peter understood it. Peter's like, oh my gosh. We have God manifested in the flesh sitting right in front of us. Wow. And then Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Like I said, Peter had the understanding of what we just talked about. So now we know without a shadow of a doubt, repentance is necessary. Baptism is necessary. So let's go into this real quick. Matthew chapter 28. Verse 18, we're going to go back to this right here. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me and to earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The name, singular, not plural. Once again, Peter understood this. Like I said, Peter had that same understanding. And... What he did was on the day of Pentecost, he preached the exact same thing. Why do you think Peter? Why do you think that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost whenever God poured out His Spirit upon all flesh? Because Peter was the initial one with the understanding that God was manifest and sitting right in front of them. That's why Peter, on the day of Pentecost, preached. He had the understanding. He was the very first person to have the understanding. <laughs> Jesus. So I want to go back to this. Because Peter, in Acts 2.38, and by the way, if you want to read that, we're going to go into that more next week. But in Acts 2.38, the very first step that Peter says is, hey, repent. Because once again, we've already gone over this whole entire Bible study that God always calls us to repentance before he calls us anything else, which is turning away from sin. <laughs> Remember, Jesus didn't have to repent. Jesus taught repentance throughout the entire Bible. He didn't have to repent. It says, Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Oh, wait a second. But what about that Father, Son, Holy Ghost thing? Ooh! It says, Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of 
sins. Now, why would why would Peter say you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus when Jesus just said you have to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Because it's singular. Because they're all the same thing. FYI, there is not a single time in the entire Bible, might I add, and then you can search it. I will listen. I will give you a half a million dollars if you can find one time in the Bible where somebody was baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Did you know that after Jesus said, be baptized in the name, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that every single time after that they were baptized in the name of Jesus, not his titles? You know why? Because number one, Jesus is God. There, there's a there's a unilat, there, there's not three, there's not five, there's not seven, there's a, there's there's Jesus is God manifest in flesh. We've already gone over that. I really hope you guys are getting this because there's so much revelation in what we're talking about right now. If you're getting it, I want you to comment, I'm getting it. And I hope you are. If you're not getting it, I want you to go home, rewatch this, pray about it, study it, do the exact same thing I'm doing. And think outside of tradition because most folks are like, oh, I don't really understand. I don't really agree with that. That's fine, but the word says it, not me. It's not my opinion. Oh. Every single time somebody was baptized after that, it was in the name of Jesus. You know why? Because the power is in the name of Jesus. Let's just say I'm going to write you a half million dollar check. And I say, um, Libby, good friend of mine. I say, Libby, hey, I'm going to write you a half million dollar check. And on that check, I sign best buddy at the bottom. She's going to take that half million dollar check to the bank. They're going to laugh because it's signed best buddy. It's not signed in my name. There's power in the name. In the name of Jesus, demons were cast out. Not in the name of the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit. No. In the name of Jesus, demons were cast out. In the name of Jesus, miracles were performed. In the name of Jesus, people were healed. In the name of Jesus, people were baptized. If you guys... Because I've been baptized like three or four times. Like I, I just like because I, I I didn't know what I didn't know what I what which was where it was right or whatever whatever. Guys, if you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, you need to get baptized in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Being baptized in the titles does not get you there. Absolutely, does not get you there. We have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. If it takes you being re-baptized, but do what this guy did. The last time I was baptized, like, I don't know, 2012 or 13 or whatever, and I had the understanding that you had to be baptized in the name of Jesus because that's where the power is. That's where the name is. In full submersion. Literally, the word baptism is baptismo, which means full submersion in water. You have to be baptized. And you know what I love about this? Like I said, you have three steps. Repentance, step one, we've already covered it. Step two, baptism. Step three, it says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which we will talk about next week, which is the third part of our salvation study here that we're talking about. But here's the last scripture I want to point out is verse 39. And I love this. Because after Peter says, repent, every one of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of your sins. And just to kind of set this up as an FYI, in Acts 2, what happened here is that they were filled with the Spirit and the initial evidence was speaking in other tongues, which are speaking in another language. We're going to talk about that next week and how to receive that and how to go about um, uh, seeking the Spirit of God in that manner. Um, um they were they people were, were were criticizing them and they were the Jews were making fun of them and Yanni oh man I'm getting way ahead of myself I'm sorry I need we just, tonight's baptism next week's spirit if you want to hear about the spirit we're you want to you want to hear about the spirit next week we're gonna talk about the spirit um so I like this next scripture it says for the promise is to you you right there looking at me the promise is to you and your children and to all that are afar off as many as the Lord our God We'll call. And it says, and with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse, uh, perverse generation. This is where a lot of us need to be. Verse 41. Then those who gladly received the word 
or baptized. If you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus, you need to get rebaptized. You need to get in contact with your pastor. Or you need to or you need to get mm, have a buddy dunk you in the name of Jesus. Fully under submersion, not sprinkling of whatever. We're talking Bible here. And and I love this guys. It says it says they received the word and were baptized. That day about 3000 souls were added to them and then here we go. Verse 42, because by the way, from all the way back then to right now, October 6th, when is it, 6th, is it 6th today? In 2020, we're doing exactly what they're doing in verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done for the apostles. Notice. I'm say that every next week. I'm saying it. Many signs and wonders were done after they received the Spirit. I love you guys. Let's say a prayer. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this Bible study. I thank you for these great people, Lord. I pray that the spirit of revelation just rests upon us, God. Lord, I pray that we would ask questions to you before we ask questions to man. Lord, I pray that we have questions or concerns. We would go back through the Bible study. We would, we would re-watch it. We'd read it. We'd dig into it. And we'd find that revelation, God, that you're trying to give us. Lord, I pray that you would watch after us. Lord, I pray that you would allow us to understand that there has to be commitment to you to receive the things that you have promised. Just like any other agreement, we have to hold up our end of the bargain, which is denying ourselves, picking up our crosses, following after you, repenting, being baptized in the name of Jesus and receiving that Spirit of God, which we'll talk about next week. Thank you, Jesus. I rebuke by the Spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus, I loose your spirit of healing to touch your minds. And I pray that revelation is spread throughout in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, don't forget to invite your friends uh, next week. We do this every single Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Don't forget to tag your friends. Um, and uh, because here's the thing, and don't forget to share this video because you never know, you absolutely never know when this video could really help somebody out. Um, I love you guys. I'm so looking forward to seeing you uh, next week. And uh, I will talk to you all later. I hope you're enjoying the weather wherever, um, wherever part of the world you're at. So y'all be good. Be blessed.